Good afternoon and welcome to today's hearing of the City Council Transportation Committee on Placard Abuse in New York City. I need Danny Rodriguez, the chair of this committee. First, let me recognize and uh, Speaker Corey Johnson and give him the opportunity to deliver his opening statement. Uh, thank you, Chair Rodriguez. Uh, I'm really, really glad we're having this hearing today. We are facing a transportation crisis in our city. Mass transit isn't moving. Our streets are congested and dangerous, and we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, trust me, I know I just released a 104-page report on what's not working and how I think we can fix it, but we need to start by getting our own house in order. Parking isn't just uh, about where to put cars. It's about how we allocate limited, valuable street space. Placard abuse isn't just about misusing official parking permits or looking the other way when someone sticks an agency hat or union card on the dashboard. It's about creating a culture where people feel free to park on sidewalks and in bike lanes. And if we're gonna break the car culture, we need to send a message that we are done prioritizing parking over people. Every time someone parks in a bike lane, cyclists are forced to mix with car traffic pitting them against speeding cars and trucks and putting their lives at risk. Every time someone parks in a crosswalk, pedestrians are left to fend for themselves, squeezing between parked cars as they enter the street, hoping they'll be able to see oncoming traffic and that oncoming traffic will be able to see them before it's too late. Every time someone parks in a bus lane, countless bus riders are pushed out of the dedicated lane and into our congested streets. This is irresponsible, it's dangerous, and it is selfish behavior. And if you're doing it with a real or fake placard, it is corruption. But to be clear, the bills we're hearing today don't just deal with placard abuse. It doesn't matter whether you're using a city placard in your personal car, driving an official city vehicle, or just a private citizen, the days of giving a free pass on illegal parking are over. Personal convenience cannot trump safety or the needs of bus riders, pedestrians, and cyclists. So I am proud of this entire package that we're hearing today and to sponsor three of the bills that are being heard. I'll, brief I'll briefly mention a few of the bills and my colleagues will discuss them in more detail, but the key here that we're talking about is transparency coupled with accountability. I think anyone who has followed this issue knows that just having penalties on the books is not cutting it here. We need to pair that with targeted enforcement, detailed reporting, and close oversight. No traffic enforcement agent should feel intimidated or pressured into ignoring illegal parking. Under, in, under introduction 1393, one of my bills, we'd require weekly, a weekly enforcement sweep in areas with high numbers of complaints. Every sweep would be documented with photographs and these details would be available for review. So we'll be watching, the public will be watching, and I think most importantly, the Department of Investigation will be watching. We're gonna need the public's help here. We need to know where illegal parking is a problem, but right now 3-on-1 has limited options for reporting it. Introduction 1395 would require 3-on-1 to accept a wider range of complaints regarding illegal parking and allow New Yorkers to actually attach pictures to those complaints that are filed. And finally and unfortunately, we need to make it clear that just because you're driving a city vehicle, you are not above the law. Introduction 1394 would ban city cars from blocking a bike lane, a bus lane, a crosswalk, or a fire hydrant unless it is a documented emergency. I think the key word is documented emergency. Along with the five bills this committee heard last year, this is a thoughtful set of legislation that tackles a serious problem and puts us on the right track toward making our streets safer and more equitable. I wanna thank the chair of this committee again, Chair Rodriguez, for holding this hearing, and I wanna thank Council Members Powers and Holden for sponsoring the other bills that are being heard in this package today. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Speaker, for your leadership on these and many other issues in the city of New York. Uh, as the speaker said, today the Committee on Transportation will hear five bills related to placard abuse. Building on the five pieces of legislation this committee heard last year, these bills represent a wholesale reevaluation of our city placard system 
and will ensure that placards are issued and used only in limited circumstances and for legitimate purpose. It, I would like to also bring that as we will be addressing the placard abuse in New York City, I want to remind uh, the city that I personally also feel that as we will be tackling the abuse of placard, I do believe also that the press should get a placard, something that for months, for years, we've been debating. Because when Bloomberg took away the placard from the press, uh, as he did it from the teacher, I believe that as we're gonna be uh, de dealing with the abuse of placard, I hope that also we continue conversation on reinstating the placard for members of the press. As the speakers say, placard abuse is corruption. It is misusing a city resources. In a city of 8.6 million people, we simply can't afford to let some people use our public space, however they see fit, while the rest of us, pedestrians, cyclists, bus riders, and drivers alike are left to deal with the consequences. Even the fixed NYC panel of, of transportation experts, business leaders, and community representatives recognize how big of an impact the city's placard system has on congestion. That's why they argue that in addition to implementing congestion pricing, the city should overhaul its placard program. Today, the city council is taking up that charge. Turning to the legislation being heard today, there are five bills on our agenda. The first three introduced by Speaker, intro, Speaker Johnson intro 1393 will require NYPD to investigate at least 50 sites per week that are the most frequent site, frequent site of placard abuse and block bus lanes, bike lanes, sidewalks, crosswalks, or fire hydrants. As identified through 301 complaints, the NYPD would then have to report on their investigations to the council, mayor, DOT, and the departments of investigation. Department of Investigation would then analyze NYPD's action to ensure that placard violations are being effectively enforced. Second, intro 1394 will prohibit official city vehicles from blocking bus lanes, bike lanes, crosswalks, sidewalks, or fire hydrants, except in a case of an emergency. Third, intro 1395 will require 311 to accept complaints and photographs related to the misuse of placards, including city vehicles blocking bike lanes, bus lanes, crosswalks, sidewalks, or and fire hydrants. In the city vehicle, if the city vehicle was responding to an emergency, the relevant agency would be required to describe the incident and explain why parking elsewhere was not practical. Councilmember Holden's intro 1412 will require enforcement officers to call in tow trucks whenever a vehicle is obstructing a sidewalk, crosswalk, fire hydrant, bike lane, or bus lane, unless it is a city vehicle responding to an emergency. Finally, intro 1422 introduced by Councilmember Powers will, re will create a, standard a standardized application process managed by DOT for city issue parking permits. I would like to invite the sponsors of the, this legislation who are present to deliver the opening statement. So since they are not here, it, I would like to welcome representative of the administration who are with us today and the lawyer will do the, and I was the council to administer the affirmation and then invite the administration to deliver the statement. Please raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this committee and to respond honestly to council member questions? I do. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Speaker Johnson, Chair Rodriguez, and members of the council. I Sorry, if you, don't, if you don't mind, let me just recognize the members who are here. Councilmember Diaz, Richard Miller, Cook, Aurela Levin, Salamanca, Dodge, Espinal, Constantinides, Menchaca, Conegui. Sorry. Uh, my name is Oleg Tranovsky. I'm the Executive Director of Legislative Affairs for the New York City Police Department. 
in addition to my colleagues from the Department of Transportation and NYC 311, I'm joined I'm joined today by Deputy Chief Michael Pilecki, Executive Officer of the NYPD's Transportation Bureau. On behalf of Police Commissioner O'Neill, I wish to thank the Council for the opportunity to comment on the bills being heard today. I believe it is important to state that the NYPD recognizes that traffic congestion can have an adverse impact on quality of life, environment, and the public health of those living and operating within the city and the region. Facilitating the efficient movement of people in our city, especially as our population and tour tourism industry grows, requires the action of multiple stakeholders to include the police department and our fellow city agencies. The NYPD's Transportation Bureau is responsible for designing, developing, and implementing strategies to improve traffic flow, remove obstacles impeding traffic, and expedite the passage of vehicles and bicycles within the city. Parking summons enforcement is a vital component of this effort. In 2018, the department issued 9,694,894 parking summonses, an increase of 6% from 2017. In addition to summons enforcement, the NYPD partners with the Taxi and Limousine Commission to target illegal street hails, which can, ha which can slow traffic and also perform performs parking enforcement at traffic stands against unauthorized pa parking violators. We collaborate with DOT and the Department of Buildings to alleviate congestion stemming from construction sites that illegally spill over into adjacent roadways. The department has also taken a targeted approach to bus enforcement, specifically regarding parking enforcement against vehicles that are not buses, but are utilizing bus layover areas and those obstructing bus lanes and bus stops where we have witnessed a 150% and, and an 8% increase, respectively. Additionally, our citywide traf traffic task force provides traffic control at focused intersections along main traffic routes and maintains a high visibility enforcement patrol in the vicinity of major transportation hubs such as Penn Station, Grand Central Station, and the Port Authority bus terminal. Specifically, the task force focuses on traffic flow violations such as double parkers, illegal U-turns, and the disobeying of traffic control signals. I think we would all agree that New York City is among the most densely populated urban environments, and its inhabitants, including those that live, work, and visit this city, demand that vital, vital city services be delivered expeditiously and efficiently, especially in cases of life safety, the response to crime, and the prevention of future crime. Central to these services is the ability of law enforcement personnel to respond via the use of a vehicle and to not spend valuable time delaying their response by circling streets in our most congested areas in search of an unrestricted parking spot. I believe we all acknowledge this reality, which is why none of the proposals put forward in today's hearing deal with the abolition of parking privileges for city-owned vehicles conducting city business. The debate centers around the extent to which such privileges should be curtailed and how those that abuse those privileges should be sanctioned. While we welcome having an open and honest discussion about this issue, we cannot simply focus on or inflate the few that abuse this privilege. We must evaluate every proposed solution through the lens of impact on response times, caseloads, staffing, and most importantly, what impact will it have on safety for both law enforcement personnel and the public writ large. The department issues parking placards to its personnel, its fleet of city-owned vehicles, as well as law enforcement entities such as the city's district attorney's offices, MTA police, and federal law enforcement. NYPD personnel must complete an application if seeking a permit for their personal vehicle, which permits them to park in and around their assigned precinct or facility. The department also issues permits to its fleet vehicles or individual units to use for their assigned department vehicles. These placards are not assigned to any one department employee as our fleet is used by any number of individuals to deliver police services. At its core, the issuance of parking placards to our personnel is for the purpose of aiding in the delivery of public services. We acknowledge that placard misuse by city personnel, including our personnel, at times has occurred. However, we take this issue seriously and have dedicated personnel specifically to maintain the integrity of the city-issued parking permit system. 
abusing this privilege, especially when blocking crosswalks, fire hydrants, bus lanes, and bike lanes in situations where it is not necessary, erodes faith in the department's integrity, that of city government, and impacts the flow of traffic in the city. We understand the council's and the public's frustration over the perceived lack of enforcement of permit misuse. When city employees, including members of the NYPD, park their vehicles in areas where parking is otherwise restricted and it is not due to an emergency or otherwise done to further the mission of their agency, our personnel will issue a summons or have the vehicle towed. If we identify a fraudulent placard, our traffic enforcement agents are directed to have the car towed, at which point the placard is seized. In July of 2017, 108 traffic enforcement agents were deployed citywide to specifically address vehicles parked illegally while displaying an official or unofficial placard. At the same time these TEAs were deployed, the, the department created and began deploying a dedicated placard enforcement unit. This unit consists of nine uniformed supervisors, a lieutenant and eight sergeants, who team up with eight police officers and eight traffic agents to respond to, respond to complaints of vehicles parked illegally while displaying a parking permit. In addition to the 108 TEAs, this unit is tasked with issuing summonses to those who misuse their parking permits, taking proactive steps to address known problematic locations, as well as locations highlighted to the department through community complaints and investigating those who have fraudulently obtained parking permits. Since 2016, we have increased the number of summonses issued for parking placard misuse by 93% with 54,608 summonses issued in 2018 alone. This number is a 30% 30, 30 increase from the 41,931 such summonses issued in 2017. In 2018, the placard enforcement unit alone accounted for 11,302 of these summonses. As of March 24th of this year, the NYPD has issued 11,470 summonses to, ve to vehicles displaying placards. Additionally, in 2018, the NYPD towed 891 cars for parking illegally with a placard, with the placard enforcement unit responsible for 114 of these tows. As of March 24th this year, the placard enforcement unit has towed 42 vehicles parked illegally with placards, on track to doubling their activity from the prior year. On the heels of this heightened enforcement effort, last, last month the mayor announced a set of new rules to further address placard misuse and traffic congestion. The mayor's plan moves the city toward an all-digital parking management system, which will phase out the physical placard system by the end of 2021 and will make it easier to enforce placard misuse and and parking rules as a whole. The mayor also proposed to institute stricter enforcement rules, a three-strike policy which will permanently revoke parking privileges after three offenses, a dedicated DOT placard enforcement unit and a team in the mayor's office to track and report on placard misuse. Additionally, in January, the mayor and the NYPD announced a dedicated team of tow trucks and enforcement agents to patrol bus lanes and to tow vehicles blocking them. There are few cities in America with the traffic and parking congestion issues we experience in New York City. Combine that with New York's unparalleled number of government vehicles and employees, and you have a challenge larger than the sum of its parts, a challenge that will only be fixed through collaboration and creative thinking. The, NYPD refor the NYPD's reforms and collaboration with, it, with its sister agencies, coupled with Mayor de Blasio's initiatives, have and will continue to lead us to a modern 21st century solution that ensures the efficient provision of vital city services to include emergency services to the people that live, work, and visit our city, while addressing congestion and making sure parking privileges are not abused. We welcome the Council's partnership and input in this effort. I will now turn my attention to the bills before us today. Intro 1393 would require the NYPD to identify and respond to 50 high complaint areas based on 311 complaints on a weekly basis and during specific times. Evaluation of these locations would have to be submitted weekly to the Department of Investigation, DOT, the Mayor, 
and the speaker and would have to detail why each location was chosen, the complaints at each location, the enforcement taken, or why no enforcement was taken, and would have to include photos of the block, the vehicle, and the parking placards being used. The department respectfully opposes this legislation. As I've noted earlier, the placard enforcement unit already responds to locations of, the, of placard misuse based on community complaints to 311 and otherwise to the department. The department has increased summonsing and towing year over year. Intro 1393 seeks to curtail the police commissioner's authority to deploy personnel and other resources by directing in legislation where certain department personnel must be deployed. Additionally, the requirement to conduct a weekly assessment and prepare weekly reports relative to parking permit complaints would require the dedication of significant resources. The department would need to hire staff or divert enforcement resources for the, purpo for the purpose of evaluating and reporting the data. There would be a significant training element for both enforcement personnel and those analyzing the data and as we've seen with the body-worn camera program, the collection and, star and storage of the required data, including photographs, would carry additional cost. Finally, it should be noted that the Department of Investigation already possesses wide latitude as to what investigation it conducts to include the subjects covered in this legislation, as does the Council, which can exercise its oversight powers as, as it is doing today. Intro 1394, would prohibit vehicles operated on behalf of city agencies from being parked in bike lanes, bus lanes, sidewalks, and crosswalks, or at fire hydrants, unless responding to or preparing to respond to an incident posing a hazard to health, safety, or property. The department supports the goal of this legislation and is committed to working with the council on amendments to the proposed bill to account for operational realities. For example, the suspension of a bike or bus lane, the suspension of a bike or bus lane during an event or the, or the restriction of a block to pedestrians or vehicles, as well as an expansion of the scope of permissible use of the, of the areas covered in the bill to include legitimate law enforcement operations where there is no other available space to park. Intro 1395 would require the department to investigate and issue a response to the Department of Information Technology and Telecommunication within <coughs> two days for every 311 complaint contain containing a photo of every improperly parked department vehicle. While the department certainly supports a timely and substantive response to anyone that calls a 311 system, this legislation poses significant challenges given the extremely short timeline it establishes for response, which will require a significant staffing increase and training to comply with its mandate. Intro 1412 would, would authorize private towing companies when directed by the NYPD or DOT to tow vehicles blocking sidewalks, crosswalks, hydrants, bike lanes, or bus lanes if the vehicle is unattended or the owner refuses to move unless it is a city-owned vehicle responding to a hazard of health, safety, or property. While the department supports the goal of this bill, namely removing vehicles causing traffic obstructions, we are concerned that this bill as written would place a significant strain on our resources. Because towing would largely be done by private companies, officers would be required to remain with the offending vehicles until the private tower arrives. In the cases where city vehicles are towed because it is not readily apparent that they are responding to an emergency, it would create an unworkable situation where a private company would then have custody and the ability to, to obtain a mechanics lien over a city fleet vehicle until the costs of towing and storage are paid. This would significantly inhibit the provision of city services. Intro 1422 would give the DOT exclusive authority to issue parking permits. Applications would be required to include the name, photograph of the applicant, among other information. The permits would display a permittee's name, agency, unique identifier, and anything else DOT determines necessary. The department respectfully opposes this legislation on the limited grounds of its application to the department and its personnel. While the department currently requires members of the service to complete an application when seeking a parking placard for their personal vehicle, department fleet vehicle placards are not assigned to any one individual. Rather, such placards are assigned to the vehicles themselves or the unit to which the vehicle is assigned. 
the vast majority of vehicles used for city business are used by any number of agency employees for a variety of official functions. Likewise concerning is the elimination of the department's ability to determine the appropriate number of placards needed for its emergency response and general law enforcement functions, and instead placing those decisions with a separate agency. This framework improperly wrests control over law enforcement operations away from the police commissioner. Finally, this bill would not only require the department to relinquish personal identifying information of police personnel and their oftentimes family vehicles to, non -law enforcement, to a non-law enforcement agency, but would also require that, a, that agency to place such information on the permit itself, both representing unacceptable risks in the NYPD's view. The existing system of the NYPD issuing law enforcement placards and acting as caretakers of sensitive information that relates to its personnel is the proper approach with a clear path of accountability. The answer to placard misuse is one of enforcement and discipline, which continues to be done in significantly increased numbers. Thank you for the ability, ab opportunity to speak about these important issues, and I look forward to answering any of your questions. Thank you. Oleg, it's always fun. <laughs> Let's start with the basics. I've seen a lot of reporting throwing out a number on city placards. Oh, did you guys have testimony? No, I, I think it did. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. Good afternoon, Speaker Johnson, Chairman Rodriguez, and members of the Transportation Committee. I am Margaret Forgioni, Chief Operations Officer at New York City DOT. With me today is Joshua Benson, Deputy Commissioner for Traffic Operations. We are happy to be here today to testify on this important issue and we'll be speaking about a number of placard processes and enhancements as announced by Mayor de Blasio last month. I will also address two of the bills before the committee today. As Commissioner Trottenberg said last month, DOT looks forward to playing a key role in helping combat placard abuse by moving toward a digital placard system, adding a new placard violation rule, and creating a new targeted enforcement team. These initiatives are important steps toward a better regulated placard system and better curb management citywide. First, as an initial step, we are conducting a demonstration program that replaces our standard laminated paper placards with window stickers on over 300 of our DOT-owned vehicles. One of the most prevalent types of placard abuse we encounter is placards that are inappropriately transferred from vehicle to vehicle. Through these stickers, we can help eliminate this abuse because they are now physically affixed to one specific approved vehicle and the stickers cannot be removed without destroying them. We are currently underway with this demonstration program and we expect to have results by this summer. And we actually brought a sample of our sticker today, so we'll pass it around if people would like to look at it. Second, DOT and PD will roll out a new state-of-the-art parking management system that will allow more efficient enforcement and will be less susceptible to abuse. Through this integrated parking management system, we will link parking meters, pay by cell payments, and parking placard information with license plates and make the information available to handheld devices in real time. Enforcement agents will use permit information associated with specific license plates, along with active paid parking sessions to automatically verify all vehicles as legally or illegally parked without referring to what may or may not be displayed on the dashboard. This can eliminate confusion in enforcement and thwart attempts to obtain free parking by falsifying or misusing Unimeter receipts and placards. Third, we will adopt a new traffic rule that will create a new violation for misuse or fraudulent use of a permit that will be available to D DOT, PD, and DOT's traffic agents. This will be in addition to the underlying parking infraction that NYPD traffic agents currently issue. Through this new violation, we will realize a number of benefits. First, we are aware that the council is interested in enacting requirements for revocation for misusing an official placard, as proposed in intro 923, and the mayor has announced a, three, a strict three strikes policy as well. To support these intentions, we will provide a violation specific to improper placard use thereby providing an adjudicated basis for us to much more readily take action to revoke permits. And we will allow for higher quality data about placard abuse and enforcement efforts in the city. We will also provide an additional $50 penalty on top of the underlying parking violation 
an amount which the mayor is lobbying to increase under state law. Finally, we will create a team dedicated to targeted enforcement of placard rules, supplementing NYPD's ongoing efforts. With this new team, we will initially focus on Lower Manhattan, giving the prevalence of agencies and placard abuse in the area and longstanding community complaints. Working with PD, we will hire the team this year and they will be empowered to ticket vehicles abusing their placard privileges or using fake placards. As DOT undertakes this initiative, we will evaluate its effectiveness and look into potential next steps, including focusing on other hot spots for placard abuse. Now, I would like to turn to the bills before the committee today, starting with intro 1422 and the permit application process. DOT agrees with the council on the need for a carefully controlled application procedure, and we have taken strides in recent years to enhance our process. We currently require agencies and organizations to provide information about each individual applicant, associated vehicle, and a detailed justification of the need for a given permit and the job duties that will be performed. We require multiple approvers through our real-time database that agencies use to request permits. And starting last year, we added new holographic features to our permits for increased security and better detection of fraud. And for certain permits, DOT now requires a commissioner or first deputy level sign off that an individual performs a minimum of at least 80% of their work in the field using the vehicle in question. While DOT agrees with the importance of having rigorous application and vetting procedures, we believe that through our, thir our current process, we provide stronger protections than what is proposed in this bill and more appropriately account for effective fleet management. Rather than having individuals apply for permits, we only accept applications from designated agency requesters. This way we prevent employees from making unwarranted and unnecessary requests for permits and ensure that each agency is accountable for its employees. The city makes widespread use of agency pool vehicles available to multiple staff, which helps reduce the size of the city fleet. Permits for those vehicles are managed by a fleet liaison and we limit each agency to strict limits on their total number of permits, which in almost all cases have remained at the same levels for the last 10 years, even as the workforce has expanded. We are supportive of a list of permissible and non-permissible uses in intro 1422, which is mostly compatible with our current traffic rules. Because they are already no stopping or no standing areas, sidewalks, crosswalks, bus lanes and bike lanes are clearly non-permissible uses in our rules and should be enforced as such. But we would welcome a conversation with the council about the benefits of being even more explicit by specifically listing them as the proposed legislation does. We require DOT issued agency permits to be renewed annually, which matches with the protocol set forth in the bill. And DOT agrees with the emphasis in intro 1422 on limiting permit assignments to supporting important agency tasks or public purposes, which we do through our current rules and procedures. Now I would like to turn to intro 1394, which would prohibit city vehicles from obstructing a bike lane, bus lane, sidewalk, crosswalk, or fire hydrant. As this committee is probably aware, through New York City traffic rules on parking, stopping, and standing, we already prohibit these actions. And in our traffic rules in general, we state that all persons are required to comply subject to limited ex exemptions. In addition, we specifically state that they apply to anyone operating a vehicle for the federal government, New York State, New York City, or any other state or local government. In the rule change I mentioned earlier that creates a new placard violation, we will also emphasize that government vehicles must comply with the rules on parking, standing, and stopping. Similar to the exemption in the bill for situations posing a hazard to health, safety, or property, in our traffic rules we acknowledge that emergency vehicles are exempted under certain conditions contained in the VTL. We also include appropriate limited exemptions for traffic and parking control vehicles, city refuse collection vehicles, city, state, or federal highway workers, and New York City DOT highway inspection, compliance, and street assessment workers when they are engaged in activities necessary for their duties. For example, a repair crew that is patching a pothole in a bus lane will need to station the repair truck in the bus lane during the repair. So we welcome this proposed legislation with amendments along these lines. 
I want to conclude by saying that DOT is eager to play its part in the mayor's plan, as he announced last month, to put the city on a path to a new system for managing parking permits through new penalties for placard abuse, new dedicated enforcement, and first steps toward a digital parking management system to replace physical placards. New Yorkers want solutions, and we understand that the council sees the impact of placard abuse on their communities and has been focused on finding those solutions as well. Along with the administration, we are eager to work together with you on improving placard management as part of enhanced and innovative management of our curb overall. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, thank you, Oleg. Thank you all for being here. So let's start with the basics. Excuse I've me. seen a lot of testimony on 311. Oh, they're on. Sorry, I'll, I'll promise I'll be quick. Okay. Well, this is a lot of information. Let's. I want to get to the quick. questions. This off. It's like a filibuster. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, Speaker Johnson, Chairman Rodriguez, and members of the City Council Committee on Transportation. My name is Bill Rita. I am the Communications Director at New York City 311. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today on introduction 1395 regarding the logging of illegal parking complaints with the 311 system. New York City 311's mission is to provide the public with quick, easy access to New York City government services and information while offering consistently ex excellent customer service. 311 received 44 million customer contacts in 2018 and ranked equal to or better than the best contact center in the private sector throughout this administration. 311 helps agencies improve service delivery by allowing them to focus on their core missions. To achieve this, the 311 process relies on partnerships with city agencies to ensure customers have access to information, assistance, and service through a variety of channels, including the call center, 311 online, text, 311 mobile app, and social media. This process is no different for illegal parking complaints. While we understand the spirit of introduction 1395, there are some concerns that are worth discussing further. First, 311 is happy to say that we already do some of what the bill would require. In 2018, more than 300,000 illegal parking complaints were filed with the 311 system, including blocked bike lane and improper use of parking permit as specific service requests. However, while 311 is the front door to many city services and is the way in which agencies receive service requests, 311 is not an enforcement agency and the, as the bill suggests. 311 is able to process service requests related to parking by referring them to the appropriate agency, in this case, the New York City Police Department, which you heard in their testimony today. To this end, we welcome further conversations with the Council and would like to find a workable solution for all involved. Thank you again for the opportunity to testify today. Myself and my colleagues at 311 look forward to continuing the discussion. Thank you. Anyone else? We're good. Okay. So how many current valid city parking placards exist and are out there in circulation right now? respond to that. So DOT issues 48,000 placards a year. The majority of those placards are for people with disabilities. Um, we also have placard categories um, that are for nonprofit organizations and for the clergy. I want to talk about total number. What is yes. the total number that exists? Sorry, all I'm placards. Building up to it. Okay. Okay. So DOT issues about 48,000 NYPD issues 44,000 and DOE issues 32,000. So that gets us to about 115,000. What's the number? Yeah. Okay, about 144,000. 144,000. Okay. So Sam, a new employee at a C agency, and I want a placard. What's the process? So each department has a parking permit liaison that works with us. So if, if there's a new, if there's a city vehicle that is assigned to a person and they need that city vehicle to travel into spaces um, that, are, that are busy with parking meters, with truck loading, with difficult um, areas to find parking, that liaison would likely apply to the department, to us, for a permit. They would need to um, justify and explain how many hours a day that vehicle is used for the conduct of city, vis um, city business and the necessity for having a permit. 
Many city vehicles actually operate without permits. They don't all need them. So, but certain types of jobs obviously do jobs such as inspectors, um, you know, ACS workers, people like that who are traveling from location to location. Do I pay anything? No. Do I say why I need it? Yes. It's specifically exactly why I need it? Yes, you do. Are requests ever denied? Yes. Very How often? So. What percentage of the time are they denied? Um, I don't have that information, but we can get that for you. Do you think every placard serves some city purpose that's issued? Well, every placard is justified at the time that we have approved it. Again, how it is used once it's been issued, I can't vouch for that person. But everyone that's issued, you believe, serves a city purpose? Everyone that DOT, DOT, I'm speaking for the DOT issued permits, yes. And Oleg, do you believe that every placard that you all issue serves a city purpose? Yes. Do you think we really need a number this high? I really don't see how there could possibly be over a hundred, I guess 140,000 city employees that need special parking privileges on a daily basis. It seems crazy to me that that is the number. Right, so one thing I wanna point out is that over the last 10 years we have not increased the number of parking permits in very, very few cases we have, but for the most part agencies were held steady at the rates that but they had But it's still a very ago. high number. Well, so for the number of, um, Maybe we want to focus more specifically on city vehicles then. So agency permits are in the neighborhood of about 13,000. Okay, so when I gave you the number of DOT 40, 48,000, that was a lot of those parking permits for people with disabilities and other types of permits. Okay. So if we're not looking at reducing that number, I don't think we're asking the right questions here. I think that the bills we're hearing today will give us the information we need to decide what that number is, but I would like to have the administration on board with that goal. Clearly, it doesn't seem like that's the case. So I wanna just ask a few questions. I know that city employees aren't the only government workers that have placards, as was just mentioned. We also see federal and state permits on cars as well. Can you explain how that works? Is there coordination with DOT or the NYPD for those placards? Yeah. Um, thank you, Speaker. Um, very good question. So <clears throat> there are um, federal and state agencies that do work with DOT to acquire placards through us, and that number that um, Commissioner Forgione gave included some of those. Um, we also have uh, federal and state entities that work with NYPD for law enforcement oriented placards. Um, and then there are certainly other placards out there that are not coordinated with the city and that's, that's an issue that you know, is, is out there. Okay, so every single day, literally every day, on 10th Avenue, on the west side of Chelsea Market, between 16th and 17th Streets, where there is a dedicated, designated bus stop Errol Lewis likes to talk about this all the time because he sees it literally every single day. There are DEA, Drug Enforcement Agency vehicles that every single day, we could probably go right now and it's happening, that are literally parked in a bus lane. There's never any ticket, Oleg. Nothing is done. There have been complaints for years and nothing is done. So how does the NYPD instruct traffic enforcement agents to uh, penalize and do something for state and federal agencies that are abusing their parking placards by doing this on a daily basis. Because for years, I haven't seen the MOP do anything on that location, nothing. So I, I mean, I'll tell you now that we'll definitely go and take a look at that location so I can't speak to that location but per se. But what I what, can but say But what are you gonna do? When you, when you go and see what happens every day, what will you do? Yeah, so I mean, when we do, when we do enforcement, and we clearly do enforcement, as you can tell, you're 50, close to 55,000 parking placards summonses last year alone. 
close to 900 tows of parking of vehicles displaying parking placards that were parked illegally. So we do this. We don't make a distinction to our traffic enforcement agents to look for city issued parking permits in order to take enforcement. So whether it's issued by a city entity, a state, a federal, that really doesn't matter. Uh, we're, we're doing the enforcement. We're following up on the complaints. So I think com part of the problem here, Oleg, is that people don't think you are doing the enforcement. You may write 55,000 summonses and tow 900 cars, but over and over again, when you see union cards and notes and DOT red vests that are put on the dashboard and all this, and, and I think if you spoke to traffic enforcement agents, they would tell you that they don't always feel comfortable ticketing people that they share the same uh, department uh, badge with. And so I think that the perception, which is very bad for the police department, it's because it, we want the police department to be respected for what they do. It's bad when it appears that traffic enforcement agents look the other way and don't equally enforce. And I can sit here and give you many, many examples. I'll, I'll jump to what I wanted to talk about at the end, which is the placard well, abuse I, Twitter account has been documenting parking along West 55th Street between 8th and 9th Avenues, retired police officers, friends, families of officers are able to park in no standing zones and in turning lanes on a daily basis, every day. Courtesy cards are displayed in the window every day on this block in my district, and it will say detective's brother-in-law on a piece of paper. This goes back to October of 2018. So they've been documenting it literally on a weekly basis, showing what happens every single week with no enforcement, none. So I, I just want to understand this goes to the heart of why we're having this hearing and why there is um, not a huge level of confidence that this is being fairly and accurately administered and enforced across the board. So, I, I mean, I think at the outset, I have to say that's unacceptable. There's no defense for it. What are you it's, doing about it's it? It's wrong. What we're doing about it is we're elevating the level of enforcement, and specifically, let's talk about the category you brought up. Somebody leaving a vest, a card, uh, a note inside of the w in their windshield, we categorize those in a separate way to just track how many of those are happening. Somebody that's looking to display something on their dashboard to obtain the benefit. Just that category alone re it resulted in, I believe it's uh, six, almost 6,500 summonses in 2018, which is almost a 300% increase over 2017, where you had 2,200 sum such summonses issued. That's simply in the category of placing something, not a placard, but something in the dashboard. Then when we talk about law enforcement placards, and that was, um, that was the other uh, issue that you brought up about traffic agents not feeling comfortable. The law enforcement placard um, issue enforcement is up as well. So we have from 2017 to 2018, we have uh, I think almost a 90% increase where we had 1,300, just over 1,300 summonses to law enforcement alone. How much um, is the fine amount? Uh, well. The fine amount the is summons. yeah. The fine amount is based on what exactly they're doing. So if they're blocking a bike lane, whatever the fine would be for bike, blocking a bike lane, a bus lane. What we're doing, just to be clear, if we see a parking placard displayed, we're giving them a summons for blocking a bike lane and checking off a box that says this car was displaying a parking placard or something else. So we could be able to track it and give you some level. But how of come you aren't towing those cars? We are towing those cars. So, but it's only it's fifty-five thousand summonses, yes. but only nine hundred tows. Yeah, so very few cars are being towed. So I mean, th there there's other factors that go into towing, and that's really the case. So if if just looking at it more broadly, we have over nine million parking summonses for the year citywide. We clearly didn't tow nine million cars either, 
right? So we have a space limitation with respect to tow pounds, how much they could hold. It doesn't serve any benefit to anybody for us to put a boot on a car and leave it illegally parked in a bike lane or a bus lane. So booting really isn't the logical option. Here, the option is when it's a significant impact on traffic, we will tow it, we will get it out of there. And we did that close to 900 times with placard vehicles. And then uh, other times in the 54,000 other occasions, we're issuing a summons without towing. So every, so again, I wanna just flag the block. West 55th Street between 8th and 9th Avenues. What the information we have is that you have been summonsing them. They keep doing it. Doesn't matter. So you summons them and it still happens. So the summonses are not having a deterrent effect on this corrupt behavior. And we, and you, you're bringing it to our attention. We clearly have been summonsing it. Now we clearly will pay extra So I don't want to say who I spoke to, but I spoke to someone in the PD personally about Elk Street, not far from here. Uh, and I said that every single day you can look out, the, I'm not sure which window, how we're faced right now. But you can look out the window and you will see Elk Street between chambers heading towards the former city planning building every single day, almost seven days a week, the weekend's not as much, there are multiple cars, somewhere between five and 10 cars that are parked on the sidewalk there. When I alerted a member of the department about this, what I was told in response was, nothing could be done because these are federal vehicles that are at federal plaza for a purpose. And so nothing's done, they don't get towed, they do it every single day. So there just doesn't seem to be a consistent measure that is taken when people are parking on sidewalks, blocking bike lanes, blocking bus lanes, doing this. It doesn't seem that the enforcement that you're doing and what you all have proposed to do is gonna make much of a difference. But, Speaker, that, that, is, that is the avenue. Now, the mayor's also proposed a three strike in, and you're out rule where individuals that violate three times or more would lose their placard yeah, privileges. But given, but aside from given how poorly you're enforcing right now, people could violate it 30 times and that, that, might, that might not count as a strike because but, you're not enforcing it properly right now. We're, we're up 93%, and so 55,000 is not a drop in the bucket. 55,000 summonses directed at placard vehicles is a very significant number. 1,000 toes to placard vehicles, almost 900 toes to placard vehicles is a significant number. I, I respectfully differ in the sense that we are doing quite a bit. 55,000 enforced, over 40,000 that were enforced last year, over 27,000 which were enforced in 2016. Every year we're steadily going up and we're not going up by five or by 1%, we're up 30% over 2017. So we're I would like to know uh, how many summonses have been issued for parking in a no standing zone on West 55th Street between 8th and 9th Avenues in 2018 and 2019 for parking in a turning lane in 2018 and 2019, and I wanna know how many vehicles have been towed. And I wanna look at that data and understand if on that block, your current strategy or future strategy is working in that way. And I could literally go location by location by location and, and ask the same questions. I, so I'd love that information. So, well, I mean, obviously, I don't have the, the numbers for a particular yes, block here. Yes, I know you, here, you can work on getting I, it. I could absolutely get it. But I, I will tell you this, that based on the concerns you're raising, obviously, the strategy could be improved at that location. If you have other locations, we would love for you to highlight them because we are getting a feed from, uh, from 311 as to individuals complaining about parking placard abuse. That numbered around... 3,200 complaints in 2018. Now, uh, just to put it into context, 3,200 complaints in 2018 about parking placard abuse to 311 amounts to about eight complaints a day. 50, almost 55,000 summonses, about 150 summonses per day. So we are out there, we're summonsing. Our parking enforcement unit is responding to the complaints 
from 311, whether it's through the enforcement unit, whether it's the 108 TEAs, or the precincts themselves. But we're responding to each and every complaint. We've recognized hot spots around the city, and we're responding to those hot spots. To the extent you could give us more hot spots, we will respond to those. To the extent we need to augment the strategy on 55th Street, we will do that. So how do we get the Drug Enforcement Agency, which has dozens of vehicles that illegally park every day around Chelsea Market, how does the NYPD get this federal agency from uh, discontinuing their illegal parking every single day? Well, there's, there certainly needs to be an improved enforcement effort based on what you've said. But on, on top of that, we have liaison with the federal law enforcement officials that we can contact and we can, we can reinforce the rules around parking permits and ensure that they don't abuse them. But if them. there's an area that you're seeing this every single day and you're doing summonses and it's not making much of a difference, when you go back and look at these hot spots, at what point does it escalate to, we're gonna to start towing the vehicles? Because maybe that will stop the behavior. I, I mean, it's, it's happening now. It's clearly, based on what you're telling us, not happening at that location, and we're gonna look at that and do that. We're gonna reach out to our federal partners, make sure they understand what the rules are relative to parking, make sure they're good neighbors and don't abuse the privileges. But yeah, enforcement, towing, all of that's on the table. So I was uh, encouraged to hear that the administration announced some of their own ideas, which you all outlined today, and you're supportive of some of the things in this legislative package. But I was a little shocked to hear that there were comments around buying parking garages for potential city employees uh, and parking lots as part of the plan. We have one of the most expansive public transit systems in the world. How do we ask every New Yorkers to make a switch and leave their car at home when we're holding city employees to a different standard. Is there an actual plan to buy parking lots and parking garages for city employees to continue I, to drive into the city? I think the consideration of finding more parking mostly relates to very distinctive areas within the city. So by the Bronx Courthouse, which I'm very familiar, downtown Brooklyn, obviously lower Manhattan, especially the court area, Queensboro Hall, these are areas of high concentration of government vehicles. Um, PD will probably be best suited to respond to the fact that when an officer comes into court, the nature of coming and going and the feasibility or lack, lack of feasibility of using public transportation for those visits. So I think the interest in off-street garages really stemmed from the fact of being realistic that certain, those very key locations I named will always be key locations with lots of concentrations of government vehicles and we might want to look at some options really to get them off the streets and give those communities a break. Does that mean buying parking lots and parking garages specifically for city employees? I don't know that it would mean that. It could be, we could look at leasing and that sort of thing. And it remains to be seen if um, how that initiative will pan out. How much would you think we'd have to spend? How much money would we pay to lease for additional parking spaces in New York City? I don't know. There is, there's no formal plan? We don't have any concrete plans at this time, no. Do you know when this was talked about, I believe the mayor talked about this, when this was talked about, was he talking about personal vehicles or fleet vehicles? The focus would be on government vehicles. But a lot of people drive their personal vehicles into the city and use placards associated with their agency, correct? The mayor said it was for personal vehicles. So, okay. So, um, are we promising free parking to every single uniformed officer in New York City? Is that one of the things that we're trying to say that if you're, I'm not just talking about PD, I'm talking about FDNY, correction, sanitation. If you, are we saying that you should have the ability to get a free parking placard and sort of drive into work? Well, I, I don't have the exact details. I mean, the, the, the proposal was, was put out there and uh, we're studying and trying to figure out if it's feasible and what the best method around doing that is. But uh, keep, keeping in mind that, you know, when we're talking about uniform members of the service, for one, I could only speak about ours. Not every uniform member of the service is obviously working at the same time. There's varying shifts, individuals coming in and out. and. The idea, I think, was around alleviating congestion in certain areas uh, that are congested. 
uh, to avoid on-street parking, to free up spaces, on-street legal spaces for residents in certain neighborhoods to take advantage of those. So government employees, government vehicles aren't, uh, aren't diluting the number of spaces. So uh, you all know the Placard Abuse Twitter account? Yes, you, you know about it? We've heard of it. You've heard of it. Well, my question is, does DOT and NYPD monitor that account? Because literally they are on an everyday basis highlighting where there is significant placard abuse taking place. So, I mean, w with respect to the PD, I, uh, the, placard, the placard unit, our placard enforcement unit may, I'll, I'll verify that, but I- what, Definitely what, should be. No, what, what I'm, I'm, we, we, we think they likely do, because it just in terms of looking at the numbers uh, of enforcement, the placard enforcement unit itself uh, in, took about oh, just over 11,000 um, uh, summonses in 2018. There were about 3,200 complaints logged to 311 about placard abuse. So the distinction there is, w the point we're making is we get complaints of placard abuse, not only from 311, we get it at Build the Block meetings, we get it at community council meetings, we get it on Twitter, we get it through the internet, through calls direct to the PD. Uh, so we're, we're gathering complaints, we're not limiting ourselves only to 311, we're getting them from a variety of sources because the end goal of the placard unit is to ensure that placard privileges aren't abused. Does DOT monitor that account? We do. You do. So. Oleg, will you ensure that yes. NYPD monitors that account on a daily basis? Yes. Great. And DOT, on a daily basis, yes. your team will monitor that account? And then, given what you see on that account, you'll be responsive if it looks like it's something that's happening on a regular basis? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you know if you've ever followed up with an employee featured on that account? We do. In fact, um, DOT has discipline um, processes in place for employees um, who violate permit and parking rules. Um, and we have penalized employees who don't curtail or correct that behavior. That's for the DOT issued permits that, yes, you're, that and you that's follow even, up on? Even not just for a permit, but just parking, um, irresponsible parking or driving. What about from the PD side? Have you guys followed up with employees featured there who are so, I mean, I can't, illegally? I, I can't specifically confirm that we followed up with employees featured on that Twitter handle. However, what I can confirm is that over the last two years, we have taken discipline, uh, department discipline above and beyond the issuance of summonses to vehicles and towing vehicles. What we have done is um, these officers, certain officers were subject to formal discipline and there have been occasions where parking placards were, were uh, seized, taken. Do you think that any form of placard abuse could be considered corruption? Sure, any form, sure, there, of course. What, what do you think would, would, uh, could be called corruption with regard to placard abuse? I mean, I'm sure I, I wouldn't want to speculate on exact scenarios, but I'm sure that that any kind of abuse of government privileges could be viewed through that lens. Uh, does it bother you that there's a continuing, and I would say growing perception out there that people feel like certain people are considered above the law? That if you are a police officer or a firefighter or a city employee and you put a note detective, brother's detective in your window that you don't get summoned and you don't get towed and that the public feels like you're kind of above the law when they wouldn't be treated that way? Sure, and, and I, I mean, I not only agree, but I, I, I agree that, that it hurts us and it hurts our overall mission. I mean, neighborhood policing is about making inroads with communities, with building trust. trust with communities. Right, and anything that erodes that trust is actually, is a problem, is inconsistent with our core mission. So I know the administration has a number of efforts to crack down on placard abuse, but um, I don't think it's making enough an impact to convince the public, given everything I've told you about what we see on social media, the locations that I've mentioned, just a few locations, there are many more, 
walk out here today when you leave to go back to one police plaza walk by elk street i'm sure you'll see it on the whack walk back of what's currently on the sidewalk there and it's every single day and i've let people in the police department know about this almost six months ago and nothing's happened so it makes me feel like even as speaker of the city council i can call the nypd and say there's a problem it's happening on a daily basis and nothing really happens so um I, I just think we have to do a better job is what is what clearly I think shows here today if enforcement's going up and we're issuing tens of thousands of tickets now as you mentioned Oleg and there's no noticeable difference on the streets uh, doesn't that say something about how we're doing the enforcement is the penalty not high enough <coughs> well I, I mean I think we can certainly if if and I said this in my testimony, the, there is a perception that we're not doing enough. We're certainly, I don't think it's undeniable if uh, maybe we're not getting the word out well enough uh, about the efforts that we're taking, but I, I think it's undeniable that going up 30% year over year, and we're not talking 30%, we're issuing 10 summonses rather than seven, we're issuing 50, close to 55,000 summonses over 41,000 the year before, over 27,000 the year before that. So we're clearly doing the work. The number of toes is clearly up. Uh, should we get the word out more? Sure, we should get the word out more. We should do a better job with that. And to the extent we get more complaints, and as I've highlighted the number in terms of proportions and, and ratios, 3,200 complaints to 311, and we and we have close to 55,000 summonses. The unit itself tasks 55,000 out of 9 million. 50, but not 9 million. But re, I mean, let's l looking at it the right way. We have cars coming into the city that are not registered in New York City. So we have a couple of million cars registered to New York City. We have cars coming from Jersey, from Connecticut, from Pennsylvania, from out of state in New York. So yeah, we have nine million summonses, uh, but look at the wide breadth of number of vehicles inside the city. Now you counter that with how many vehicles actually have placards and what what is the small number of that that's actually abusing the privilege and we're addressing those. So if you could just, again, I think you said this in your testimony, but I, I just wanna hear it again. How do you address, um, no, no, the question is, Another complaint that I see on Twitter and I see myself with my own eyes is that there's a city vehicle that's parking in a bike lane, parking in a bus lane, it's unsafe, it's creating unsafe conditions, it's backing up traffic, it's creating a bottleneck. Um, what's the policy for allowing city vehicles to stop or park in bike or bus lanes? When is it considered acceptable? I mean, obviously that is a last, that is a last resort in cases where we're responding to emergencies, where we're conducting uh, the type of necessary business that needs to be conducted that requires a response from us. But of course, if there is a spot that's available, that should not be the location of choice to park your car in. I mean, I think we're in agreement on that. So how do you address it if you get a report that a CD vehicle is parked in a bike or bus lane, what, what, what happens? Summons, tow, the, the regular enforcement efforts that we do, discipline if need be, if, it's a, if, if there's a case of recidivism, as is the case now. You, you will summons and tow a city vehicle? Of course. I'd like to see the numbers on how often that happens. It just seems unlikely. I mean, we don't, uh, that is, uh, there's very few city vehicles that are summons and towed. That's right. That's the that's the there point. Are, there are some, but, but very no few. Number. Yeah. But some of some of the offenders we see on a daily basis, regular offenders, are city vehicles. They should no. they should never park in a bike lane. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Or a bus lane. Or a bus lane. Or in front of a fire hydrant. Correct. Shouldn't park illegally. Okay, but they do it, and because they are city vehicles, they don't receive the same level of enforcement that other vehicles receive, which creates a perception that if you are driving a city vehicle, you are treated differently. That is what's happening. This is a big problem. It creates distrust, not just in the NYPD, but government overall, that if you work for the city, if you are lucky enough to have gotten a placard, if your city vehicle is marked with a 
uh, logo or insignia related to that agency, if you put your city business card or city vest or city helmet or whatever it is on the dashboard, you will not get the same level of enforcement. I have to just clarify one thing. That's not what I meant. I meant, for example, a marked Department of Buildings vehicle. That's what I thought you meant. We don't have a lot of summonses issued to those types of vehicles, but we don't see them committing a lot of violations out there either. Speaker Johnson, I just wanted to add right now um, to mention that our, our, our placard rule will address some of this. So what this rule will do is currently if you're parked in a bike lane, you're going to get a summons for being in a no standing anytime area. However, with our new placard rule, what you're going to now get are two summonses. You're going to get one monetary fine for parking in a no standing, and then you're going to get another one for abusing your placard. And the beauty of it is that you're going to get two summonses. It's going to cost more, um, but it also that PD and DOT can better track the abuse of placards. And it will help with the three strikes, you're out approach and, and that sort of thing because we can see which vehicles are getting these sorts of um, summonses for placard abuse. How many times have city employees been disciplined? Well, I can speak for, for DOT. We have, we have multiple times that we have disciplined employees for different driving infractions. No, I just want to know about parking placards. Okay, I don't have any kind of citywide numbers on what agencies have done for parking. Park. Oleg? Uh, what I have is, one, my numbers are from uh, May 28th of 2017 through March 24th of this year. We have 61 that have been disciplined. 61 people have been disciplined, individuals. That's uh, not an that, aggregate number, that's a... Yeah, 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 that's individuals. individuals. But, I, but the, key, the, the key also is, there are many more that have been summoned or towed, but it's to rise to the level of discipline, we're seeing something, we're seeing something more, and we're deciding that it's necessary to, you know, the summonsing or the towing isn't working, and, and discipline is the, the solution in so, those cases. So it's my understanding from my council that the things that you're discussing are all part of some of the bills that we've proposed. I, I mean, I think if you, if you, based on my comments on, on the bills, I mean, we can talk uh, to wh which bill it is. Um, there are many things that we do agree with. It's just the road on how we get there that may be what we need to work on, but it's not the end, it's not the end result. I mean this in a very uh, collegial way. You are such a diplomat, Oleg, on how you approach this and so many other issues and how you, <laughs> Categorize things. Sometimes the divide seems very far, but you always try to find that bridge to pretend like we can easily get there, even when I think there is a pretty wide delta between what we think is necessary. And that is a skill that I think you possess. <laughs> I mean that in a nice way, I really do. Because you. you are constantly you. very optimistic about finding a way forward, even when I think there's a pretty wide delta in how we get there. Um, do you, do you, do you both think that you get enough information from three on one to go out and respond in a timely manner? Yes. Really? I mean, because what three on one, typically what they respond on Twitter or they respond when someone makes a complaint, it could take hours if not days to get someone to go to that location. Well, I think then we, we have to... These are real-time problems that are right, happening. Right, and I think that's where I was going to go with this. We have to kind of take a look at the, the nature of what we're talking about that's complained of, right? So uh, a complaint about a parking placard or an illegally parked vehicle is a snapshot in time. 30 seconds later, that vehicle could very well be gone, right? So I think the benefit... But it's typically not that. It's not 30 seconds. Typically, well, the car is parked there for an hour, two hours, sometimes. three hours. So, they parked there for the day. Sometimes, but sometimes, and, but a lot of times it's shorter. And the, the issue is, is... Just here's a map of all of the... Uh, just to show you how widespread placard abuse is. Here's a map of... Uh, what, what is the dates for this? This is just over the last year? 2018. So this shows you... A number of, from three on one, the number of placard complaints, and it shows you how, how widespread it is all over the city. And again, as we know on most things, three on one only captures probably a fraction of 
the overall issue because the vast majority of people don't take the time to wait on theorem one or file the complaint. Most people just go about their lives. And so this is a snapshot which shows you, I think, a slice of a much bigger problem. But I think, to your point, I think our numbers actually play that out. So if we have the roughly 3,200 complaints to 311, but we have close to 55,000 summonses, you're right. We're not only getting our complaints from 311, we're getting them from a variety of sources, you know, and we're responding we're responding where needed. But I, to, to the benefit of 311, I think, you know, maybe we won't get there in time to address the vehicle complained of when the call is made, but that'll alert us to a location where we can potentially look at, is this a hot spot? Are we seeing a lot of 311s coming from a particular corner and, and start focusing our attention on that corner? So it may not work for the particular vehicle, but it'll work for the overall long-term long strategy. Uh, Margaret, you uh, mentioned the, that uh, some of the placards are issued for fleet vehicles. Do you believe that all placards issued to personal vehicles serve a city purpose? So the ones that we issue, yes. What we require for those is the certification from the commissioner or the first deputy that that person is using that vehicle for um, city government business 80% of the time. What we see is with some departments, they don't have the ability to get a city vehicle for each and every employee who needs one. DOB is an example, HPD, and ACS. So if someone's found to uh, have used their placard not for a city purpose, does the city agency that that employee is employed by then refer that complaint to DOI? Um, it, it can, and it, in some cases I'm aware that they have rescinded that permit, they've taken it back and they've sent it back to us. So I've seen but both But do they refer it to DOI? Do you know? Do they refer when they, they- I know in cases they do, and, and other times they've just taken action. Okay, I, so I'm gonna finish with this. Oleg, you mentioned as part of introduction 1393, uh, the fact that you have concerns related to, uh, you said introduction 1393 seeks to curtail the police commissioner's authority to deploy personnel and other resources by directing in legislation where certain department personnel must be deployed. Additionally, the requirement to conduct a weekly assessment and prepare weekly reports relative to the parking permit complaints would require the dedication of significant resources. The department would need to hire staff or divert enforcement resources for the purpose of evaluating or reporting the data and there would be a significant training element for both enforcement personnel and those analyzing the data. And you go on and you say, finally, it should be noted that the Department of Investigation already possesses wide latitude to what it investigates and uh, uh, investigations it conducts to, in, uh, to include the subjects covered in this legislation, as does the council, which it can exercise its oversight powers as it's doing today. I just mentioned to you earlier, I flagged multiple times to multiple people in the NYPD problem locations, and still today, those locations are problem locations. So I feel like we have been forced into a corner that even when we proactively tell the PD that there are problems, the issue persists and remains, and that is why you see this posture through this bill, which is directing the NYP to do something because of the lack of confidence that we have, that this is being done in a serious, stringent, and an equal across the board manner on placard abuse. And I guess your concern is that we are directing the NYP to do something that should be at the discretion of the police commissioner? I mean, in, in effect, yes, but I mean, I. But the important thing to highlight, I think, you know, I, I obviously in commenting on a bill that we need to point out the challenges, but the other important piece to highlight in the bill are the similarities. So we are going out, we are identifying hotspots, we are responding to 311 complaints currently. DOI currently has the ability to oversee this as the bill lays out. So there are, there are a lot of things in this bill that are currently being done, I understand. So then what's the problem with codifying it? Well, because the, that actually crosses a line uh, in terms what of- What line? Well, the line of we're telling, we're telling the police department in legislation, telling the police commissioner in legislation, 
put your resources there on that corner, put them there on this corner. Don't tomorrow. we do that currently in some ways? No, I don't think we, we do. Don't think we, so. You don't think we ever legislate on public safety related measures for the NYPD? Not in, not in terms of this type of specific deployment instruction of resources, I don't think we do. But uh, again, I mean, I think the important part here is to realize that if- But the NYPD, just to be clear, and I guess this is the argument between uh, e executive authority versus legislative control and oversight, the NYPD is a city agency that is governed by legislation that the New York City Council can pass and our oversight ability. That's what the charter says, it's a mayoral agency, but the City Council has lawmaking authority and oversight authority and budgetary authority over the NYPD. And if we believe that a particular city agency is not doing something that is protecting the public in the manner which we believe needs to happen, I think it's well within our legislative purview and the city charter to be able to, to give these type of instructions. And maybe in the next month, we'll see more responsiveness from the PD on Elk Street and on West 55th Street and outside of Chelsea Market and many other locations that now that you'll be monitoring placard abuse uh, on Twitter on a daily basis, that we'll actually see this. But is that, you think that's the argument is between I mean, the executive? Yeah, I mean, the, the, I, mean the, the, I think to, to the point that you've made, that's precisely what we're doing here today. If, if there is, if the strategy, if the enforcement strategy that we're deploying is, is unsatisfactory to the council, the council through its oversight powers brings us here as you did today. And through and, our lawmaking ability. And, and, you qu and you question us now through your lawmaking ability, I think in this case, we can get to you know, what are we doing? And, and you do this in a lot of other areas and we've collaborated on these areas in terms of how, what are we doing on a variety of crimes? What type of enforcement are we taking? How many cases do we have in this sort of, in this scenario? Uh, we've given you a lot of the statistics. These are statistics we've tracked and we've started tracking based on concerns you've raised in the past. This placard enforcement unit that we instituted in the middle of May was based on, was the mayor hearing the concerns from you, from the council. We are being reactive and we are being receptive to your input and we are taking, we're making strides. We're, you're seeing the enforcement numbers go up. These are not fake numbers. These are real numbers, real summonses, real towing that we're doing. You've called us in here to talk about placards in June of last year. You've called us back here eight months later. You're doing another oversight hearing. There is an oversight entity that has been stood up and created by you. You love it, Oleg, don't you? I, we are, we do have quite a bit of oversight and we don't shy away from it. And you know, if you bring us down here and we explain our strategy and you point out areas like 55th Street or Chelsea Market or Elk Street, which we thought was addressed, but um, if we need to address it again, we, we will address it again. Um, so, I mean, I think the gist of it is we, we as a body can set policy for the city of New York through local law and through oversight and through budgetary powers. And what we're seeing right now from our perspective isn't working. Uh, so something needs to change. And I think there is a difference of opinion on what the tools in the arsenal should be to actually change that. And hopefully today, when you leave here, I will see a significant change in the next week on West 55th Street, and I'll see a significant change around Chelsea Market, and I'll see a significant change literally by looking out the window here on Elk Street and what the PD does to enforce this when we're flagging this so that maybe we don't need to go as far. I still reserve the right on these bills, but we'll see what actually happens coming out of this hearing and how you're gonna enforce in a more stringent manner, not just through summonses, but also through toes, as well as a stepped up measure of deterrence to stop this type of behavior. So I appreciate you all being here. I, I specifically wanna um, separately um, uh, thank uh, the deputy chief uh, who is here today uh, because I have been um, making complaints about 
massive double parking on 8th Avenue, which is unsafe for pedestrians and cyclists between 14th Street and 23rd Street with large tractor trailer trucks. And I know that this week you have done a major sweep on 8th Avenue, really cracking down on this. So uh, Deputy Chief Pilecki, I wanna thank you for being responsive in this instance when I made that local complaint. And I really appreciate you working with me on this issue locally. Thank you for mentioning it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Juan. I want to turn it back to Chair Rodriguez. Thank you, Speaker. I have a few questions. One is, how many, he has mentioned the placard units, how many police officers are dedicated to the placard unit? Yeah, we have one lieutenant, we have eight sergeants, eight police officers, and eight traffic agents. And can you clarify a little bit what role have they been playing with a three-year strike program? Yeah, so they started in 2017. Um, they start going out into each one of the outer boroughs. So we have teams that go out into all of the outer boroughs. We have a team in Manhattan. They respond to 311 complaints that come into our traffic management center. They're actually notified by telephone of where the complaint is. They generally get there in, in real time. They do the best they can to get there in real time. They take appropriate summons enforcement and towing uh, uh, actions. They've identified certain hotspots throughout the city uh, based on 311 complaints and their own observations. And um, that's, that's pretty much what they do. In addition, as Oleg had mentioned earlier in 2017, um, the city hired 108 traffic agents to focus on uh, permanent vehicle uh, abuse, parking uh, abuse. And so, just again, real quickly, um, in 2014, there were 30,000 summonses roughly written. In 2015, same thing, 29.5. 2016, 28. But in 2017, when those two units went uh, live, in July, we went up to uh, 41,900 summonses. And in 2018, the first full year that they were both in place, that's when we went up to the 54,000 summonses and the uh, 891 tows. How many... Uh, members of the NYPD or traffic agents has been disciplined for no enforcing parking regulation? I'm sorry, say it again, please. Any numbers of police officers or traffic agents being disciplined for no enforcing traffic uh, parking regulation? For not enforcing? Yeah, I think uh, you're saying for violating? For, for, not, for not enforcing. For not enforcing. I couldn't tell you. I don't think it's, we wouldn't capture it that way. I, I mean, the best way to describe it, I don't think there's a discipline category for not enforcing parking placards. I think there's a general for not exercising your duty. I don't know what the exact term for it is, but there's a, but that's for anything. That's not being on patrol. That's not responding to a 911 call. Everything gets grouped into that. For the, in, for the isolated issue of, how many were disciplined for misusing parking privileges, not for not taking enforcement, but for misusing parking privileges, and that's what I mentioned to the speaker earlier. We have 61 over the last year and a half, and that's in addition to the summonsing and the towing that we're doing. I, I, I just think that it is important to also, you know, as I know it is the interest of everyone to address the abuse of block cars in, in our city to also look at in some way on how whoever are responsible to oversee, you know, the abuse of placards should be also responsible Even under their watch. You know, there's a, a, a lack of enforcing for not giving those tickets to particular area. You no, know, I'm not going to be getting into like, everyone had their, in their own district, their, their own hot spot, like, you know, some car, yes, park every day in the same location in front of the fire hydrants. Like that's no one day that there was an emergency that you saw 10 police car because there was a homicide and therefore there's a responding to emergency, we understand. But when you pass by through a fire, for a fire hydrant, yes, every day, eight in the morning, and you see a official vehicle parked in front of that location, someone, has to be responsible for, you know, how are we doing on enforcing? So, but you say that right now there's not. 
Well, I, I think, I, if, if I understand the question the right way, what we did, I, I think, what we did was, first in the middle of 2017, we dedicated 108 traffic agents to doing parking placard enforcement. Now they have regular traffic agent duties, but one of their primary focuses is to do tr uh, parking placard enforcement. Those 108 traffic agents were responsible last year in 2018 for about 41,000 summonses between them to parking placards and about 777, I think is the right number, toes of parking, of cars illegally parked with placards, right? That's the 108. In addition to that 108, we have the dedicated parking placard unit, which the chief just described to you. Those group of officers and traffic agents have close to 11,000 uh, parking placard summonses between them, and this is in, they're the ones that respond to community complaints from, from a variety of sources, and they're responsible for over 100 tows themselves. So yes, there, are, there is an ability for every police officer, every traffic agent citywide to take enforcement against placard, placards, but what we did was dedicated forces that are not married to any one area to spread out and actually do this type of enforcement as well. So you, you just described that the numbers of men and women dedicated to the placard units, when, and that number is for the NYPD, right? Yes. So in the other DOT 10-person enforcement team that the mayor announced last month, is that a separate unit? Yes, it is. We're in the process of preparing to hire them now. Thank you. So they don't, they have not been hired yet. Correct. It will be. Yeah. It, how many vehicles that we have on the, the, on the DCAS city vehicle? Um, like 25,000 vehicles? I'd have to double check. I don't remember offhand. Yeah. Okay. Will, will that, with the DOT also be working with DCAS to oversee the placard use around those 25,000 city vehicles or not? Well, DOT issues a lot of the vehicle, of placards that already are on those vehicles, so we're already involved in that. Okay. And, and do, do you have the number, like, how many a placard has been revoked, let's say, from 2016 to today because they have used all those placards? Can, can you say that one more time? How many placards have been revoked in the, from 2016 to today because of abuse on using them? Um, we, yeah, we don't, we don't have many. We, we have revocations, we don't have many, but just keep in mind that, for example, when you're talking about department fleet vehicles, these are NYPD vehicles, not personal vehicles, you're, you're not gonna revoke a permit there. There, you, there could be a summons that an officer may be responsible for paying for misusing the car, or there could be discipline as a result of that. The revocation really wouldn't come at fleet vehicles. You know, it, it but, would. But I'm, I'm on everyone, all New Yorkers that they have a placard. Like, how many has been revoked in the last, from 2016 to today? because we not properly use of those black cards. Well, who will have you talk about that? Let me talk about the discipline. Yeah, so there are, um, Chairman, there are um, DOT, a part of what we issue are disability placards, and we have um, a process for revoking those as people misuse them and, um, you know, say they share them inappropriately with um, friends or family members who don't um, have, have a disability and who are not transporting um, the, the person who has the, the placard. Um, so we have revoked um, and, we, and we do revoke those placards when they're misused. The agency placards, um, as uh, Oleg mentioned, tend to be reassigned when a, um, when a, a, a member of, of the, um, uh, the staff is misusing them uh, to some, because the, the purpose of that placard is to execute city business. The business still needs to get done, taking away the placard from one person and making it disappear does not help. It's gotta be then reassigned to another um, staff member. So that's, t that's how that tends to work. The sticker um, pilot that we're, we're trying now is um, one of the ways we wanna see if we can stop people from misusing uh, placards. Keep that 
placard in the vehicle where it belongs rather than passing it around and, and sharing it inappropriately. So that's, um, that's one of the things we want to try. And then the, the, uh, the three strikes policy, I mean, the council has proposed it. The mayor has, is also um, supporting a three strikes policy. So I think that's um, where we're headed. Um, we, and we will be able to execute that by having a new <coughs> rule that specifically makes the placard misuse a violation, right? Right now, the placard misuse is not its own separate park parking violation. We're um, putting a rule forward to make it a, a standalone violation, and that's something to tie the revocation back to. So um, those are some of the measures we're taking. Yeah. Look, I, I know my colleagues, they also have other questions, but I just like to say that, you know, we are not questioning the use of placard by those individuals a governmental or, pri or, or non governmental who properly use them. We know that there are so many individuals that they are New Yorkers with disability who they have the right that they use properly those, those placards. They, we also know that there's a number of veterans and they also members of the city employees, NYPD or no, that they properly use those placards. What I believe that everyone recognizes is that the level of abuse by some individual is something that we cannot hold anymore. And I think that that's where all agency from DOT and YPD and we as a council, we need to recognize. And this is about safety. This is about vision zero. This is about congestions. So I hope again that working together, we can be able to go extra mile to push the envelope and to really recognize that there's so many individuals that they are abusing, you know, those placards. But we also have to recognize that there's others. There's teachers that they work in a school that they are located in transportation deserts. There's veterans. There's individuals with disability that they properly use the placard. So this here in this conversation is not against those or those who respond to emergency, who usually, who properly are using those placards. It's about those who abuse the placard. I know that Councilman Cabrera has a question, then Councilmember Levin. Unless, unless you, okay. Thank you, sorry, I have a, I'm late for a meeting, but I just had one, one question is, have you, exam so in, I represent downtown Brooklyn. I mean, I, I get, there's, I get uh, tweets, you know, every single day. About, like, I would say like a third of my Twitter feed is people tweeting at me about placard abuse. I'm not even joking. It is rampant in downtown Brooklyn. You can just walk around downtown Brooklyn and it is like so galling how rampant it is. I mean, every, every inch of unclaimed space is taken up. I mean, like if you go on, the Department of Transportation just redid Adams Street and like you go up Adams Street and there's a portion next to a median that is not even close to a, a parking for any, I mean, it's, it's not legal parking. And it is always filled up with cars, always. Obviously over on the BQE ramp, you know, which is, you know, it's like a, it, it, it uh, I don't even know how to describe it. It's, you know, it's, 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 it's like up on a curb that is like a sidewalk kind of, that is, always has dozens of cars. Um, and often it's not even, I can't even call it placard abuse because there aren't even placards in there. There are just paraphernalia. There's a, a badge of some kind or a decal of some kind or a vest of some kind, some type of union identification, you know, just all types of random things that indicate that this is a person who should be okay, even if it's not a DOT or NYPD or any type of uh, officially issued placard. It's just, it's just like a kind of indication of some kind. And I mean, is that something that you look at? I mean, it's because it's, it's yeah. like, that's not even, I wouldn't even call it placard abuse. It's just, you know, it's just this kind of secret code. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm you know, a, some type of uniformed personnel in the city and don't picket me. It absolutely is something that we look at. Back in 2017, when those two units went live, the placard unit and the 108 agents that were hired, 
Um, we took a look at our enforcement regarding placarded vehicles, and we, we realized that there were a lot of vehicles out there where people were putting paraphernalia on their dashboards, expecting some type of courtesy. So we uh, decided to track those type of summonses. We uh, encouraged our traffic agents when they see those types of things out in the field to issue a summons. In 2017, uh, 2,205 were issued, and that was for half a year, six months. Uh, 2018, it went up to 6,457, so it's definitely is something that we look at and, and try to address as best we can. Okay, because that's, it's obviously, it's, it's, yeah. it's really proliferated. So. I would just say, Council Member, to, to supplement the, the work that PD is doing, I think that's part of the reason why the mayor announced last month we're working on this digitized system of placards, too, so we know in real time and we can serve the information to PD who actually has a placard associated with which vehicle, rather than having to, you know, inspect the dashboard and see what's there, mm -hmm. actually have a real-time verification system. So that's in the works, and I think that will help with this, the issues you're highlighting as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for thank the you. courtesy. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I've been listening for the last, I don't know, we've been here three hours uh, to uh, your testimony. And I just wanted to address a couple of things here. Uh, the sticker uh, program is a pilot. How many vehicles are we talking about? 300 vehicles. 300. Let me ask a question. Would that, I, actually, I like uh, your initiative. Is, would that be something that we could apply to and require every vehicle? Is that what you're looking forward to do? Right, so we're starting our evaluation of it um, shortly, and then by the end of the year, we're gonna have more information on the effectiveness of it. Um, we're gonna get feedback from NYPD, from the Department of Finance. We're gonna do lots of observations of the vehicles on the street to see how they're acting differently, and we would look to expand it if it does prove to be effective. You know, because what I'm finding out is that a lot of people are creating their own placards, fake placards. This uh, sticker is a little more difficult to replicate. And I, I think this is, should be something that should be required of everyone, including elected officials, uh, to have the sticker and the placard. Uh, I don't know where you would put that sticker. Is the sticker in the front window? Is she yes. all on the side? It's in the front. In the front. Okay, uh, you know, I, I fully support it. I, I think it's a brilliant idea. Uh, it will cut down, and, and this, this is a segue uh, to a problem that I have, but I hope the NYPD could help me. It's been going on for years, uh, around Fordham Hill Oval. Uh, I did, we have DOT, people who, same stories that we have heard. I don't wanna be redundant here, but uh, we have, every day parking in the bus stop. Uh, and most of them are putting fake ones. I, it was my understanding that fake ones automatically get towed away, is that true? So what we ask our agents to do is when they see a permit, and just so you know, DOT trained all of our traffic agents in identification of, of bad permits. When a vehicle's parked in violation and it has a, uh, what appears to be a bad permit in the window, we ask them to call for a tow truck immediately to get it off the street. But what I'm surprised is, out of the 40-something thousand of them, only, let's assume all 900 were fake ones, which I'm sure they were not, that there were only, let's say there were all 900 that were fake ones in tolls, that there were not more, because I see so many of them that it just, I'm a little baffled as to why so few towings regarding fake ones. When you say fake ones, are we talking about self a photocopy or yeah, something that's made up? Photocopy, I make my own. You know, it's not hard. We're all technology we have today for someone to create one. I mean, I see it at Father Sizer. I see it in Sedwick and Bailey. I mean, they're, they're, and they're there literally every day. Um, but having fake ones. So I know you have eight agents uh, and they want to increase the rate of, of towing. I, I invite you to come because you're going to get at least 15 of them, minimum. Father Sizer and uh, right there where Bailey and Sedwick uh, intersect. I think in order to be effective, part of the plan is going to require to be consistent. 
So it's not like you go one day, ticket, you know, I think the ticket should be higher. Honestly, I think the ticket should be $1,000. It's an abuse. I know it sounds like a lot of money, but it's an abuse of the privilege. This is not a right that we have to have this placard. It's a privilege to use it. I think it should be much higher. I guarantee you if it was a $1,000 penalty, your numbers would drastically change because that's a high, that would get people's attention. Wherever pre people's treasures are, that there where their heart and minds will be also. And I think this, this should be something to consider to increase the penalty, because right now, it's, to be honest with you, it's quite low for the risk, because this is the way people are calculating. All right, you give me, how much is the ticket now for, $100? It depends on what what violation they're they're committing, um, and that's that's one of the issues, Council Member. I'm glad you highlighted it. There is no violation right now for misusing the placard. Where DOT is creating a new rule that makes that a standalone violation. The mayor has expressed the desire, like yourself, for a higher uh, fine amount. It's capped right now by the state, so we we, we want to pursue that absolutely, and we think you're you're right on target. We got to make people feel the pain a little bit to reform the behavior. But let's say they get torn away, or you give 40,000 uh, violations, right? Uh, tickets, 40,000, is that what I? It was close to 55,000. 55,000, what was the average uh, penalty for that? So it's, it's, you know, just as my colleagues just said, so r right now, the way it works is if you're if you're a car with a placard in the window and you park on a bus stop, you'll get a summons for parking in a bus stop. And whatever penalty it is for parking in the bus stop, that's what it is. I see, so and there's we'll, not a separate And we'll check one. a box and says, this car also had a placard in the window. You don't get a penalty for that today, but we just track it to say that the vehicle displaying a placard was parked on the bus stop and they got a bus stop summons. And then the same thing for a bike lane, the same thing for a bus lane. So you're getting the violation for whatever it is that you're violating, and then we're checking a box when we're issuing the summons so we know the car displayed a placard. So uh, I, if you need legislation for this, I don't know if you, if you want to codify this, I'll be more than glad to put it in today because really, here's the mindset. The mindset is I'm going to get a $100 ticket, $125 tickets by being the bus stop, whatever it is. That's, that's less than what I'm gonna pay for the $225 to park the car, for example, by Fordham Hill, right across the street. So they're willing to take a chance, they're not getting tickets, so it's almost like private parking for them. So if you need help with that, I'll, I'll, I'm trying to find solutions here. Uh, if you need help with that, please let me know. I'll be more than glad uh, to put an LS request unless one of my colleagues already sent it to their staff. I don't care. What I care is that it, it gets done. Uh, the other thing um, I, I meant to ask you, how many federal and state vehicles have been towed? So we, we don't track it. We don't tr state-owned vehicles. Right. Yeah, we don't track it that way. So we don't run the registration of who we're towing. Uh, we, we, what we know is the car that we towed, we issued a placard summons to. So we know that car was towed because of placard abuse. I mean, for parking in the bus lane, but they also displayed a placard and they were towed. But we don't run the registration to find out if it's registered to me personally or to the NYPD. Okay, you think that would be useful, Oleg, to do that, to track it, how many state, federal, because we're gonna, you're gonna get asked this question again and no, again. No, I mean, I think, I, I think it could, it, so, I mean, what we wanna do is get to, to the answer of, you know, who's, what agency or what branch of government is misusing the placard. That could be done because the placards are actually, they have serial numbers, they could be tracked. We, I don't think we necessarily need to take the additional step of running a registration because if you're doing it for a placard abuse and you have the serial number on the placard and it comes back to whatever agency it comes back to, you have your answer. I, I, unless there's some other reason to run a registration, you know, I think we could achieve the same goal with what we're doing already. I just never seen uh, 
in the 30 plus years I've been in New York City, I've never seen a state, city, or federal vehicle ever get a ticket or toll. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that people are more likely to take a chance if, if we're not tracking you know, those variables uh, then, you know, to breaking down where, who is actually uh, doing, violating uh, the rules. I mean, to ask you, how many, how many uh, of, of those who got uh, violations that, uh, out of the 55,000, how many uh, were, they had three strikes already? Have you done data, run data on that? No? I mean, you're getting ready to institute three strikes and you're out. I, I, I want to see if this is a real problem. Do we have, is it a repeater problem? Because if you're going to pass a policy, you need data to substantiate that it's, it, it promised with a three strikes uh, category. We don't have the numbers with us. We've been working with Department of Finance who handles the, you know, the, the ticketing and the collection on, on running some of those numbers. And um, it's difficult to do now because again, there is no placard violation per se. So um, I think that's something that's gonna get much easier and more convenient to uh, attribute those three strikes. Once we have this placard rule, you can just simply say which vehicles have three placard violations and those are your, um, those are your qualifying vehicles. You know what it is? I'm trying to figure out. There's 55,000 tickets you give out. It's a high number. Okay. You got 150 plaques, right? Going out. So that's 30%. 30, 30 something percent. Right? Yes, so is it, is it, you know, one person at a time committing? I mean, do we have one third? Uh, people committing, you know, trespassing here, <laughs> you know, the boundaries of what they should be doing, uh, or, or actually not doing, or do, or do we have just so a few repeater offenders that keep, I think that's a really important number to track down. I'm glad that you're reaching out to the Department of Finance. Hopefully you'll get that number soon. Uh, and that will give us, a, that will affect your strategy you know, and, and also looking at it, what else uh, you could do. Uh, I see my colleague, uh, Councilman Miller, with the last of the council members here, <laughs> so I don't wanna take more time. And I know you've been waiting here also um, as long, but I have one last question I have to ask you. I, I, do, I do like your idea of having space around courthouse, like the Bronx courthouse. I go there, it is, insane, right? Uh, I, I'm fully there with you. But I see DLT cars parked in the streets. They take away parking from overnight from uh, my constituents. Why, why can't we get car garages? The employees go and pick up the cars in the morning, just like everybody goes to work, pick up the cars and go. Why can't we do that so we can have more parking spaces uh, throughout the city? The vehicles you see, you know, a lot of times people see a permit that says DOT in it, and it's prob it could be issued to a different department. So I just wanted to mention those might not all be DOT vehicles. No, I see um, the sticker in the car. All on the side of the vehicle, yeah, right. Yeah. So, okay, so to answer your question, we don't have a space, we don't have spaces to put all of those vehicles overnight. We don't have garages for those purposes. You know, the city's real estate is so hard to come by. We're working hard just to keep space for our facilities, for the trucks themselves, for the supplies and the, the personnel. Um, so the we city, haven't had that The luxury. city has about, and you can talk to DCAS, they have about 5,000 lots. You know what, Some of them might be small, but you know what? 10 cars here, 10 cars over uh, there, uh -huh. and you have about 5,000 lots. You talk to the commissioner in, in DCAS and see, even if you get a quarter of those of the, of the streets, uh, I think that will be helpful. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing them on residential streets within your community? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, which I find it odd being a government vehicle in the street 
I, I just. Well, and, and the other thing I should make you aware of is that we do have some inspector titles that work straight from home. So they have a tablet, their work is downloaded, they go straight from home to their first site, and it's more efficient than having them come into work. So we have all kinds of scenarios where we have a lack of parking and we also have a certain type of um, work that we've designed. It's just, we're starving for parking. Yes. The situation yeah, is understand. getting so grave. I, I, my colleagues could tell you the same thing. They're, we're suffocating. It's getting people very, very angry, especially when you have projects like I do, the DLT is doing, that take a quarter of a mile in Jerome Avenue, for example, and it's two years delay. My people, are, they're like, they just, it's just very upset. So, I, and then when you see, you know, government vehicles in the street, which is taking even more. So, I, I, Mr. Chair, thank you so much. Uh, I, I thank you for the extra time. I know Councilman Miller is eager to, uh, to share his frustrations. Thank you. So thank you, Councilman Cabrera. I would like to acknowledge that also we were joined by Councilmember Reynoso. Thank you to the members of the panel from all, all three agencies. Now we have Councilmember Miller, so with that, we will let you go. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your, your patience and to the panel coming up here. And, I, and I, I'm pretty sure we're all on the same team here. Um, but there, there are some significant concerns that the that the members have, uh, I think that beginning with our chair and the speaker has uh, articulated. But there's a uniqueness to this that I think that we all have specific issues as well when we come to our particular districts. And, and as the member just mentioned, Councilman Cabrera, um, particularly when you have um, locations where municipal services are being delivered, courthouses and so forth, um, that becomes very problematic, which leads me to my, my and, and I have some photos here. And these are vehicles with plaques parked along the sidewalk, on the sidewalk. That's kind of unacceptable. And I am one who is, I'm, I'm very, I do believe that there, there are certain areas, um, designated areas uh, um, for certain parking that is amenable. But I, I think that when you see that it's kind of over the top that they really begin to take advantage and it becomes disrespectful um, to pedestrians and to the communities that, that, that we all serve. So in this particular case here, we have, uh, space dedicated, which is the community board, uh, local electeds and others have de dedicated to uh, commuter, commuter van parking. They were moved particularly from uh, the, of the major um, transportation hub of, of Parsons and Archer Avenue in Jamaica, Queens, uh, last stop on the uh, E and the J train around the corner to 153rd Street. They had three designated locations at Parsons. They now have almost the entire block around the corner. They've been uh, retrofitted with signs. They have a uh, kind of a bus stop shelter coming to accommodate this particular uh, constituency. And the pictures here will identify that in that this designated parking space we have a New York, actually uh, a Metropolitan Transit Authority vehicle. And we have several vehicles here which are, have courthouse parking uh, placards in it. So there's a bigger problem and, and I think it speaks to, uh, to the institution is whether or not we have enforcement uh, and what kind of enforcement that we have. I witnessed, as you can see here, there are two commuter vans parked here, one double parked. The commuter van, which is double parked because the designated space allotted to them is being occupied by folks with plaques and the commuter van is given a summons for being double parked. 
I, I can't see the, the, the logic in that. And the, the placards that were illegally parked weren't issue summonses. Could you explain that? So I, I think the only explanation is that they should have been issued summonses. Okay, I, I can't believe that I'm even advocating on behalf of the, of the commuter vans, but this, this right is right. And, that that, and we've, that surprised me more about your question. Yeah, <laughs> so, but, but we as a community have, 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 you know, we decided that this was a location and they just, day in and day out, they can't get in there. So much to the point that I spoke with a uh, commissioner uh, over at DOT and, and uh, seems, it appears that they've settled on a solution that they're going to create a very unique sign, no parking except for commuter vans, including, this includes placards. Do we need to say that? Is it not necessarily the additional language that is necessary, but the will to enforce. Is there, is there, first, is there, do we still have um, kind of no, no summon zones issues? No, so do I mean, have, I think. How does I, that work? Yeah, I think there is, there's certainly a will to enforce because we're, I mean, and I'm just kind of thinking we had the exchange over the number of summonses and, you know, I've repeated it a few times. 55,000. Right, but e here's the interesting part about it. If you take a look at overall parking summonses 2018 over 2017, we have a 6% increase in parking summonses citywide, right? When you take a look at placard-related summonses, we have a 30% increase citywide from 17 to 18. So there's certainly not an unwillingness to take enforcement there. There's actually seems to be four times the willingness to take enforcement with respect to uh, placard misuse in those cases. Are, th are there all, we're gonna focus based on what we see, based on where our attention is called to, based on 311, where we're, you know, the complaints coming direct to us. But there's always going to be, unfortunately, situations where we're not, situations that you're going to bring to our attention, as you did, as the speaker did, as the council members did. Uh, and we're going to focus on those areas as well. I'm sorry, gonna, I, no, no, that last piece I just missed. I just yeah, and, uh, and we'll focus on those areas as well. I mean, we'll, we consider the, the locations that have been brought to our attention today, we consider as community complaints right, you're representatives of the community and you're telling us here are the issues in, in my district, this is what I see when I'm around the city. To the extent we're not addressing those already, we're, I've taken notes, the chief has taken notes and we certainly plan on addressing those complaints when we get back to one police plaza. Are there areas that some of this are not written? That, that I'm aware of. I'm, I think summonses are issued wherever they need to be issued. I mean, and again, as I said, we can't, we're not absolutely everywhere. We can't spot everything. There's always gonna be a picture that pops up and says, oh, they're not taking enforcement here, but we're gonna learn from that picture, go there and ensure that the abuse is, is, is addressed. So I, I can appreciate the 55,000, but so, I'd say two years ago, maybe even a little more now, there was a uh, audit done in downtown Jamaica area. And I believe there was about somewhere in the area of 180 designated placards that should have been in that area. On the day of that audit, there was in excess of 700 placards in the downtown area. A net total of about 500 that should have not been there times 365 or just not even the weekend we're talking about well over 150,000 summonses in one particular uh, assigned area for traffic enforcement agent. So if you look at it, multiply it throughout the city, you know, I believe that 
the purpose of traffic enforcement is due to exactly what the name indicates is to facilitate the safe transfer and travels of traffic to move it along, not necessarily that, that we're trying to generate revenue. Um, I, I would like to see more of that. And, and so we're in the cases that they're in, uh, involving no standards in bus stops and, and bus lanes and, and bike lanes and so forth, I, I think absolutely um, there should be some of these issues no matter whom it is. Uh, I, I don't abuse it. I take the two blocks opportunities to, to walk and, and do whatever we have to do. But there are certainly communities that, um, that are uh, overwhelmed and, um, and for those who, whether, whether or not we agree that there are these transportation deserts that communities uh, that don't have necessarily have access to public transportation can of course to drive or drive for whatever reason, not a criminal offense to own a car. Um, but cannot park their car in their community because hundreds of people are coming from outside of this community is, 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 is a worthy conversation. And, and whether you're a council member or traffic enforcement, police, fire, or any other agency, um, we all serve the city and, and have to figure out a way to uh, exist um, cohesively and, and coming in and um, parking illegally, parking on sidewalks, is, is um, really does damage um, to those relationships. And so um, it, it kind of um, erodes the integrity of what public servants are here to do. And, 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 and I would submit that if this uh, will stimulate the, time, the type of conversation that would just allow us to clean it up. You know, I, I think then, then we've achieved our goal. You know, I'm, I, I don't want to be punitive. Um, uh, it is what it is, but there is an absolute proliferation of, of prack of fraud. Everybody has one. It is duplicated. Uh, certainly, um, the, 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 the barcode is, is, is a great idea. Um, but there has to be the will to enforce. And, and certainly some of the things that we've highlighted here today, uh, some of the members, as well as, you know, w this particular instance here when we dedicated a particular location for a group of folks and they can't get in. And no one's um, enforcing that at all. And then the real irony is that you uh, summons the double park vehicle because they can't get into their spot. That's that, that's mind-boggling, to say the least. And so I, I would hope that we could continue to have this conversation. Um, these aren't really for public uh, consumption. Um, you're welcome to them and, 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 and use them accordingly. Um, but I, 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 again, I just thank you for coming here and, and having a really candid conversation. I know that I've had a conversation with the commissioner and the chief on each side um, and that we genuinely want to address these issues and the concerns and so uh, I look forward to working with the council and, and, uh, and each and the agencies involved to make sure that we can come to a real resolve that really respects and values communities that we all serve. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, two brief questions. One is how many collective uh, if you have information, how many collective bargaining agreements include a provision of parking permits for members, uh, and how many permits fall under this agreement? Um, we have heard from several agencies that their collective bargaining agreements do entail the provision of parking, but I don't have an overall number. We'd have to talk to OLR about that. You don't have. I mean, I know the collective bargaining agreement addresses parking. I don't know the extent to which it does, but it certainly does. Okay. And, and the administration announced it, it would de deploy a tall trucks to combat a vehicle blocking bus lane and obstruction traffic. It, something, of course, that all advocates and all support. How are these enforcement efforts being targeted 
and how many vehicles has been pulled, how many summons for each violation has been issued. Are you talking about specifically those involving placards or just in general? Well, that's the administration I give you both. On, on so just in general. Vehicle blocking, the, especially bus lane. Yeah. Um, in 2018, we issued 33,600 bus lane violations, which was a 61% increase from 2017, where there was 20,843. Um, bus stops, we were up 9%. We actually had... Uh, 284,000 versus 260,000 the prior year. So uh, we did pretty well with that. In 2017, we were up from 2016. Uh, bus lanes, we were up 67%. 12,000 in 2016 versus 20,000 in 2017. So it's shown a nice increase the past couple of years. In the announcement that the mayor made was recently, I know that it's good to share this data, that you shared the data with us, but Recently, because everyone, you know, because of the issue that we face with buses moving so slow, and one of the reasons among many is a drivers blocking those buses or vehicle blocking those buses. So the mayor announced that he will deploy tow, tow trucks, and 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 that's not in the 2018. This is recently. Like, do you have any data already on? how the program has been working? Uh, let me see. Well, I can tell you that we've done a couple of bus lane initiatives so far, a year to date on those initiatives. Bus stop parking summonses in 2019, there were 73,000 versus 68,000 for the same period last year. Um, moving violations, this year we're slightly down. We have 2,000 versus uh, over 2,000 last year. Um, unfortunately, that's all I can provide you with at this time. We can get back to you with additional information. Okay. Look, I, I think that at a moment right now where we just. Oh. We just want to clarify one thing. Earlier at the beginning of the hearing, um, Speaker Johnson asked me for the total number of DOT, PD, DOE permits, and my I quickly added them up. My math was faulty. The correct number is 125,000. So if there is a record, let us show the correct number in the record. Thank you. So, leave that as we are a I can say I hope close this this to the discussion about congestion price, and and I think that we have to not only think about how putting a, a new toll to charge those cars that come to Midtown will help on on congestion price, but I think that what we are discussing today is also part of the solution on congestion. Like the words, like a few years ago, there was a whole summit at the UN, and they were saying, like some mayors at, from London, other places. One of the questions about what do you think, you know, how the city can do better on congestions and on Vision Zero? The answer was enforcement. And I think that even though, you know, we don't, we don't have the exact numbers or the data on how many individuals to other five boroughs. They've been using some identification, uniform, of IDs, of fake placard, it, 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 as official placard, but we know everyone knows it's a large numbers. And this is something that we hope that we, you know, crack down those cases. And as I said before, like, I'm one of those who really, it, understand that, you know, there's a number of New Yorkers that, the, as I said, better and people with disabilities, other people who work in, in city agency, that they get it, they properly use it. But as, if we want to address congestions in New York City, at the, or Vision Zero, those abuse of block cars have to stop. And I hope that we can continue working with you guys 
all agency working together and we from the council doing our part. And I want uh, to also thank uh, DOT in another topic, DOT and, and I know that the NYPD has been also hopeful to work with us to a, a close Broadway from 44 to Union Square on April 27 as we're doing our fourth a car free day. So led by DOT and the team, a, a Margaret, Polly, and the rest of the team, and I really appreciate it. But I also know that the NYPD support is very important because in order to close Broadway on April 27th and dedicate it to celebrate Earth Day full of activities, a, of many citywide institutions from NYU, Columbia, CUNY, a, and others, a, and also most of the major city institutions we will be celebrating Earth Day on April 27 by, again, closing Broadway from 44 to Union Square, Washington Heights from 181st to 190, and other locations. And those the location will be full of acti activities, but also discussion. On, on April 20, on April 2017, we will be holding a panel about how to improve on transportation sustainability in at Columbia University. So, Thank you, you know, to all of you, and, and I hope again that when I'm not in the governments anymore, that we made a commitment that DOT will continue holding this yearly event, closing a, a, a street in our city to celebrate Earth Day. So, thank you, guys. Thank you. So, with that, we're going to be calling the next. Ellen McDermott. Eric McClure, Regina Meyer, John Orchid. Greg Waltman. <laughs> Diane Drozek. You might begin. Yes, hello. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, Sorry again, saying we put in the clock on two minutes. So sure. Uh, thank you, Chairman Rodriguez, for convening this hearing. My name is Ellen McDermott. I am the interim executive director of Transportation Alternatives, which has advocated for 45 years on behalf of New Yorkers for safer, more inclusive, and more livable streets. We fight for biking, walking, and public transportation as the best alternatives to the automobile. I have submitted written testimony in support of all five bills being discussed today, but would like to use my time to speak about three in particular. Transalt supports intro 1394, as blocking bike lanes, bus lanes, crosswalks, sidewalks, or fire hydrants is already prohibited by law, and not doing so, frankly, ought to be a matter of common sense. Blocking bus lanes can lead to delayed commutes for hundreds of transit riders. Blocking crosswalks makes intersections harder to navigate, especially for those with mobility impairments. As we saw last summer, after Australian tourist Madison Leiden was killed because a driver was parked in the bike lane on Central Park West, this illegal behavior can have deadly consequences. 
municipal drivers ought to set the standard for good behavior on our streets, and we cannot help but wonder if others are emboldened to break the laws because they see city-owned cars and trucks parked illegally. Intro 1395, which would require 311 to accept photographic evidence of illegal parking and placard misuse, would be a useful tool in the campaign to end these behaviors. Drivers of municipal vehicles or of personal vehicles with pl parking placards are able to park illegally without repercussions due to a long-standing tradition of professional courtesy. Transportation Alternative supports legislation which would require drivers of municipal vehicles or personal vehicles with parking placards to provide a legitimate reason to park their vehicles in a way that impedes the movement of pedestrians, bicyclists, or transit riders. Finally, Transalt supports Intro 1422, which would better regulate the way parking permits or placards are allocated. Simply put, there are too many cars in New York City, so we stand in strong support of legislation which would better regulate and potentially place a limit on the number of parking permits or placards issued by the city. While this bill does not explicitly seek to address the sheer number of parking permits or placards that currently exist, we would encourage the DOT and the City Council to work toward reducing this number. Thank you. I'm not sure how this works, but I'm going to do it anyway. My first thing is, what do, you, what do you think of a citizen who had crossing the street, simply crossing in a crosswalk, two broken feet from a pothole and a plate that wasn't on right? I am told by the city legal department, being I'm the first one hurt in that pothole, they're not liable. They didn't even offer to pay for any of my medical. No citizen who walks in the crosswalk should have to be told, well, tough. We're sorry you got hurt. It may not be our, it may be our fault, they even said, but you were the first one hurt. There's a law saying notification that they, the city's not responsible until someone reports that hole or deformity, and they have 14 days to fix it. But my concern is they have a law of accessibility under the ADA, the ADA laws of accessibility, that crosswalks and are supposed to be accessible for the disabled. Well, leaving potholes until someone else reports a pothole or just examine the streets, that means someone's not doing something. The point is, how do you have one law saying they are responsible and another law, the city code, saying they're not? And I called your legal department. They go, we have 400 lawyers, but we're not allowed to talk to you. The point is, are these two laws, they fall under the Department of Transportation and DP? I'd like to get answers. I went to DOT to find out who actually looks for the potholes. I found out they depend totally on 311 calls. I don't think New York City knows that the only time they investigate a pothole is if someone else reports it. They don't go around examining or observing. They just, which I was shocked. Now, I would like your opinion. How would you feel if you're crossing the street and it says walk, there's many holes. Okay, I'm sorry, I can't. I can't. Oh, Diane Drozick, D R O Z E C K. Basically, I. Oh, you have. Okay. Oh, so it's two minutes. I didn't know. Okay. It is important for you. It is in the record, but I had to keep listening to the rest of the panel. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you to the speaker for holding the hearing today. My name is Eric McClure. I'm the executive director of Streets Pack. The legal parking and the misuse of, and abuse of parking placards causes significant, significant problems for New York City, so we're grateful that the council has introduced legislation to address these vexing issues and is holding today's hearing to discuss them. Coupled with recent initiatives announced by the mayor, we're hopeful that these efforts can begin to put a dent in the problem. Illegal parking placard abuse have many negative consequences, including the, uh, the, the obstruction of crosswalks, sidewalks, and bike lanes puts the safety of our most vulnerable street users at risk, often gravely. Illegally parking in bus lanes disrupts commutes and inconveniences dozens of passengers at a time. Blocked access to fire hydrants is a potential catastrophe every time it happens. 
Furthermore, the prevalence of the misuse of placards, let alone their legal proliferation, incentivizes driving that adds to congestion. And we shouldn't overlook the effect that placard abuse has in eroding the public's faith and trust in government. The Placard Corruption Twitter account has put a spotlight on the problem of placard abuse, and misusers of parking permits provide a seemingly never-ending supply of material for that Twitter feed. We support Intro 1393, which would require the weekly evaluation of sites prone to misuse of permits and illegal parking, though we have reservations about having NYPD take the lead on data collection. Since evaluating the problem wouldn't require immediate enforcement, we urge that the work be done by another agency given the, the degree to which placard misuse seems to be done by police officers. We also support the intent behind Intro 1394, which would prohibit the illegal parking of city vehicles except in emergencies. These vehicles, however, don't park themselves, and we believe that the legislation needs to outline consequences for city employees who might park vehicles in violation of these rules. The same is true for Intro 1395, which would re require 311 to accept complaints and photographic evidence regarding the misuse of permits and illegal parking. Without explicit consequences for the city employees responsible for such actions, we're unsure of how effective such prohibitions might be. Illegal parking has consequences for those who have to avoid or deal with it, and it should have consequences for those who perpetuate it. We strongly support Intro 1412, which would require the towing of any vehicle blocking a sidewalk, crosswalk, hydrant, bike lane, or bus lane. Towing is a real consequence that would undoubtedly create a much stronger incentive for people to avoid illegal behavior than would summonses alone. Given the significant potential for improving the, real, the safety of pedestrians, cyclists, and motorists, as well as for improving conditions for bus riders, we urge the expeditious passage of this legislation. Lastly, we also strongly support Intro 1422, which would standardize the process of applying for and granting city-issued parking permits and increase transparency around the, issue of the issuance of placards. The process outlined by this legislation would make the misuse of permits more difficult, and the civil penalties for misuse would create a real consequence for placard abusers. We urge quick passage and implementation of this legislation. The ultimate solution to reducing the misuse of placards in a role in illegal parking is for the cities to significantly reduce the number of parking permits that it issues. We hope that the council will take up such an effort and explore ways to incentivize city personnel to use public transit rather than drive. We'd all be better off as a result. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, thanks, Chairman. I'm John Orcutt with Bike New York. Um, we support the legislation that you're looking at. We really appreciate the council's um, attempt to really raise the, uh, the profile of this issue that New Yorkers are so frustrated by. Um, Speaker Johnson is right that the enforcement that's going on is not sufficient to the scale of the problem. This is an unbelievably widespread daily issue, and your map showed it. Um, you know, in addition to the placard abuse Twitter handle, there's cops in bike lanes, hashtag cops in bike lanes Twitter handle, cops in bike lanes Tumblr page, this is stuff we see all the time. And really, you know, the cops are not out there towing their own cars. They're not out there towing FDNY ambulances and SUVs. Um, that is just not happening. Um, the council's speaker's new um, transportation plan calls it a culture of disregard. And really what we've let happen in the city over generations is uh, allow an entitled class of government employee drivers to emerge and they feel like they play by an entirely set of, different set of rules. The little technical fixes that you heard from DOT and you know the sort of number mumbo jumbo that you're getting from the PD, um, they're not gonna fix this. And I think one of the unfortunate things of this hearing is that we focused entirely on enforcement. City government agencies in New York are not democracies. They're the command and control outfits. If a commissioner says, you are gonna stop parking in those bike lanes. And DOT does this, because it's very embarrassing for DOT when we take a picture of uh, one of their cars in a bike lane or a bus lane that they've created. But I don't think it, you know, I don't think the commissioner of Department of Buildings, the sanitation commissioner, certainly not PD commissioner, are talking to their people and saying, you gotta get out of the damn bus lanes. Gotta stay out of the bike lane. It's not happening. That message is not getting through to the people who are driving those city government vehicles every day. They are having lunch in the bike lanes. They are smoking cigarettes in the bus lanes. That's what they're doing every day. Um, it comes down to a lot of management issues. Commissioners need to be saying this stuff to their workers, to their deputy commissioners. No deputy commissioner wants to get reamed out by the commissioner. The commissioner does not want to get reamed out by the mayor, but that's not happening anywhere in the chain in the de Blasio administration. The mayor is getting on the radio and muddying the waters by saying it's okay to pull over in a bike lane just for a few minutes. Um, 
This comes down to the mayor, and this is a huge problem because this is a culture of disregard that's built up over a long period of time. We can have a bike-friendly New York, and we have one part of city government working on that, but one part of DOT creating good design bike lanes that eventually link up to each other isn't gonna do it. We need a huge number of city agencies getting that that is a city policy and a city goal and that they're all responsible for meeting it. Thank you. Thank you. Tesla, thank you. Now we'll call it the next panel. Greg Waltman and Todd Mizell. Any question after the hearing is over, like in 10 minutes? Oh, well. Councilman, um, I have a statement here. I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to give it to you. Um, part of the thing is uh, uh, it was uh, actually a pleasant surprise to hear that you were interested in, uh, in, in including us in the placard, uh, in, in getting us placards. Uh, I, you're going to have to excuse my pessimism on that. Uh, it took seven months for, for the council staff to get back to us on any of the compromises that we offered on the bill that is existing, intro 332. And when I heard from them, oh, well, uh, we, we can help you with your placard bill. And I said, wait a second, we don't have a placard bill. And he didn't seem to know what I was talking about. I don't understand that. Uh, we, we, we've offered compromises and we don't get a response. Um, now, on, on some of these other things, um, you, know, you got all these city, uh, city vehicles coming into the city. Uh, probably congestion pricing is going to help that because uh, I've heard from some of my Staten Island cops that say, oh my God, I'm going to pay $27 to, to come in each day. Maybe they'll take the ferry. Um, you should also, uh, the next time you have a hearing, bring the Department of Finance in here and find out exactly how many of those tickets are being dismissed. Uh, I'm going to leave you with this statement. I'm not going to waste any more of your time. Thank you. Your turn. Good afternoon, Council. Greg Waltman, a representative company, clean energy company, G1 Quantum. Um, I'm going to find it, it hard to parse through some of these narratives that include clean energy, but I guess we could approach it from um, a vehicle contractual point of view. Um, perhaps congestion and um, the type of toxicity in the air and environment related to exclusive, I've never seen um, a Tesla police or, or a government vehicle. Um, maybe that, that's something that could be included in the type of um, fiscal year 2020 as you build a, a vision, not only for 2020 but 2030, where different types of quantum tracks and other types of um, proprietary track enhancement that could be um, supplemented to the current infrastructure of New York City could go a long way in creating the first ever self-sustainable city in the world. Now, that doesn't have too much to do with placards, but if we could approach it from uh, maybe a congestion point of view, if the, um, the binding or contractual agreements that could be created could create a different types of um, an outlook for the city, which could be positive. Thank you. So with that, we come to the end of the hearing. We'd like to thank the committee staff, Jane DiGiovanni, Council Elliot Lynn, Council Emily Rooney, Senior Policy Analyst Rick Arvelo, Senior Policy Analyst Shima Obertet, Cherry Finance Unit Head, and John Basili, Finance Analyst. So with that, this hearing is adjourned.